Hi, I'm Bruce Calver, Regional Vice President for the Society of American Magicians. Today we'd like to show you uh, a beautiful tucked away hidden secret. We're here in Ashland, Massachusetts, which is the next town over from Worcester, Massachusetts. And uh, you're in for a treat because we're about to give you a tour of the Magic Barn. Let me introduce to you now uh, George Lentros, who is the owner of the Magic Barn. Thank you so much for letting us oh, uh, take a tour. thank you for coming. I mean, you now, tell me about this barn. Was this uh, here? Was it uh, something you built? How, how did this well, come to be? It, we bought this property, and this barn was an old horse barn, and it was dilapidated. In fact, there was a tree growing right through the barn. Really? And we decided to, to rip it down, but when we were trying to move it, we found out that it was uh, had a foundation of 18-inch uh, square oak uh, sills underneath, wow. so I decided to restore it. It's about 1823, huh. and when we go upstairs to take pictures upside, upstairs, yeah. normally you build a barn by building a frame and numbering mm -hmm. all the parts, right. and you either number them with Roman numerals or regular Arabic numerals. Really? You know, numbers. If it's Roman numerals, the frame comes from England. Huh. If it's regular numbers, it was built in America. Okay. This came from England. So when you take some pictures inside, I'll point out all the Roman numeral numbers where they... Uh, now, Julia. when did you start this project? In about five years. It took about five it years. It took five to years to put it together. Yeah, right. And when is it completed? It's completed, it was completed maybe two months ago. But I know you, it's never I completed. Never, it's never completed. Right? Because okay. you're already talking about adding more to the building more, right. than we now, have right now. Most of the dental work is original. Yeah. And uh, of course, the siding is not. You probably heard of Wayside Inn yeah. in Sudbury. Well, we, I copied the paint that they painted the Wayside Inn. This said Wayside Inn red and lamb's wool trim. Huh. So it's that copy. Well, what about this window right here? These are all stained glass windows. There's approximately 18 or 20 stained glass windows throughout the barn. I'll show them to you as you go on. Okay. I want to tell you something unusual. If you look at the chimney on the side, yeah. Well, we try to straighten the barn, but we couldn't, so it's tipped. Actually, the barn is tipped. <laughs> so when I contracted for them to put up the chimney, I said, I want you to tip the chimney. He says, sir, we never tip a chimney. Sure, because they're, they're craftsmen. That was their fault. I said, no, yeah. we don't. Because if I put the chimney vertically yeah. and leave the barn tipped, it'll look like hell. Right. So that's a tipped chimney. <laughs> I had to put some I-beams in it and compensate for it. Uh -huh. So if you want to sort of, if you want to take a picture, you can see with the uh -huh. the, the chimney is leaning. We'll take a, big, a look at the chimney. A fireplace inside. All right, well, enough of the outside. Oh, Let's go right. inside and see all the treasures. Okay. They didn't make too many of these. Uh -huh. And this is not an arcade machine. It's one that was used in famous hotels like Newport. Mm -hmm. And it's a violin and a piano, and it plays every note faithfully. There's, doesn't, it's not a arcade, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll start it up for you. It's a coin machine, of course. You put a nickel mm -hmm. in it, but uh, you can hear it. It gets a little loud. <laughs> and I give it, this it puts a rod in on it. I get it tuned up. We're going to meet uh, Peter Lentros, who is uh, George's son, who is also as proud of his father as he is of this place. And uh, Peter, I'm going to have you uh, stand next to me here. Okay. And uh, let's talk about uh, the stove that you have here. Yeah. Uh, this is a classic wood burning stove. Um, it's a princess stove, look. and uh, it's been converted so you can actually use it. It's mm -hmm. been converted from a wood burner to a gas and electric stove. Uh, the tragedy of all these stoves, uh, turn of the century stoves, during the 50s when we entered the atomic age, everybody just smashed all these stoves. <laughs> they just, uh, they wanted the modern radar range, so, so they smashed all these stoves. And, and they have quite a bit of detail to them, a little trivet that'll drop down so that you can put something here to keep it warm. This would, of course, have been the original to pick up the original plates. Uh, What's then, neat about it is it, it, it's old-fashioned, but it's a modern stove. Correct. Modern convenience. Then you can keep bread up here warm, and that would have been in the original stove. And then we've converted the inside of the stove to a real stove. 
uh, mm -hmm. we, we uh, copied a soapstone sink. So in other words, uh, soapstone today is, is pretty soft. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gotten evidently so far in the vein that it's pretty soft. So, so we took a black granite and uh, duplicated a gra black granite uh, countertop mm -hmm. and gra uh, black granite, uh, easy for me to say, right? Yeah. Uh, soapstone sink. Now, one of my favorite things in this place is this fan. We have these huge fans uh, in, the, uh, in our living room at home, yet they compact it into a little tiny spot right there. And that does the same thing, doesn't yeah. it? We're going to show you a bathroom. <laughs> Let's show you the bathroom in here. This is a pillbox toilet. Um, they, a lot of times they would be mounted much higher for better gravity feed, but this is a lower mounted one. And uh, does it work better than the one at home? You yeah? it does work better because you know it doesn't have all the fancy fill valves and oh. they weren't worried about water wastage back straight then. Down, said, well, that's <laughs> straight it, huh? down. That's it. Straight down. So uh, so it probably uses a lot more water than the newer toilets. But what does uh, this have to do with magic? You don't have to fix it. Uh, you can't make a zombie out and of it, the and spare parts. It disappears and right? never comes back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, a lot of things in the barn just happened. And we went uh, to an auction and saw this uh, nice uh, tile work. Uh, it's actually the Crusades, and uh, it was such an impressive piece, we had to find a place to put it. A lot of things in the barn just happened to fit, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was a nice piece, so uh, we decided to put it there. Tell me about these, uh, these iron gates here. The iron gates, this is a funny story. Again, a lot of things in the barn were just happenstance. We happened to be somewhere and saw something. Uh, this opening was already cut, and uh, we had no intentions of putting the gates in there. So when the gates came along, you'll also notice a little secret. They really don't fit. But we couldn't make the wall any wider, so it's good enough. <laughs> and there's such uh, nice looking gates that uh, we decided to put them in just to separate well, the two rooms. Let's go through the gates and see what's on the other side. Yeah. Hmm. We have a bar over here, a well, well-equipped bar, always good for magic. This Where did is, this bar come from? This is an English pub bar. And uh, again, the room was already finished. And uh, we came across the bar. And uh, it was disassembled and brought over from England. <laughs> so this would have been in a small hotel or pub. Mm. And uh, it fits nicely into the corner. The stools, as a matter of fact, came out of an old railroad station locally here that they were tearing down and upstairs there are three more of these stools so mm. the stools basically came along after the fact also now you have various uh, signs and uh, pool and uh, po it looks like a poker table a over poker there. table yeah uh, which I'll, I'll bet you never played poker on right i'd like to call your attention to the stained glass <laughs> oh let's look at the windows the Okay, now these stained glass windows, was that also an auction piece? Uh, yeah, in fact, there was a house that were tearing down in Worcester. And this would have been on the stairway going up to the top stair. And um, one of the auctioneers that we know was after all the architectural stuff, but he wasn't after the windows. So mm -hmm. uh, we got the windows. And there's always some bone of contention whether the pheasants should go that way or the other way. So every mm -hmm. so often we switch them. <laughs> this phone booth came out of the uh, courthouse in Portland, Maine. So when they were destroying the, tearing down the courthouse and rebuilding a new one, this is the actual phone and phone booth. And we actually took the phone and modified it so it could be used today. <laughs> so all the old wiring, but you actually can use the phone and, and make phone calls. Can we talk about this, the wooden ceiling right here? Another story. Uh, the room was finished. Uh, we had we had different tile up there, uh -huh. and um, we went to another auction, and this would have been on a wall. And believe it or not, this was out of a big old library, <laughs> and um, the there are actually just enough tiles to fit here. Again, just luck. It just uh, worked. Huh? It just worked. Wow. Especially this way. Yeah. Uh, this way we had some leeway because we were going to put the windows in. We could have made the spaces bigger. Mm -hmm. But this way they fit perfectly. Of course, this is a standard size, and they are standard size. So I guess we were lucky. Yeah, yeah. The lamp came out of an old movie theater. Um, there would have been about a dozen of those in the theater. And uh, so that came out of an old movie theater with a nice curved red glass mm -hmm. and the leaded crystal. This is a polyphon. And it's an interesting story. This is the original company from Germany called Polyphon. 
And Polyphon wanted to come to the United States and sell their disk machines. So they founded a company called Regina. And that's a Regina uh, music box. And Regina is the same, music, the same company that makes the Regina vacuum cleaners. Oh. Regina also makes pipe organs. So what happened was they graduated from producing these machines, which are strictly mechanical and wind up, to organs. Mm -hmm. So Regina still exists. Uh, Polyphon no longer exists. But the American company still exists, not producing this type of machine, but producing organs as well as vacuum cleaners, which led from the pipe organs. Hmm. And these are all working uh, machines? All they working. All this work. one would probably have been the original jukebox. This would have been in a hotel. And you adjust, you adjust the um, lever to pick which tune you want. And you'd move it forward. Well, let's just pick one in the middle here. Uh, the tunes are in German and Dutch, uh, again, because the machine would have come from there. Mm -hmm. This is about 1890. Takes two Dutch pfennigs. So you have to get the coins to make it work. You have to get the coins to make it work. Uh -huh. Two of them. Two Dutch pfennigs. Inflation. Inflation. <laughs> so what it'll do is it'll position the disc to one, the one you wanted. Pull it up. And the other neat thing about it is it has bells, which makes it quite rare. Yeah, you can open that up and we can see the inside. The sound is so rich. Uh, I think your father likes... Uh, uh, clowns. Clowns and vending machines and uh, coin-operated machines, because there are lots of those here. I remember this in a penny arcade a years penny arcade, ago. Yeah, where things were much simpler then. All right, let's talk about this uh, interesting collection of statuettes that you have here. What's the history on these? Okay, these are made by a famous sculptor named Moretto, who makes regular sculptures, marble and all. And they talked him into making uh, magical ones. And I got this collection in Switzerland over 15 years ago. And there are no duplicates ever made. Here's some of these are Houdini, and they come down through all the physms. I've gone to the physms. So every time you go to physm, you get... And in fact, I'm going to the one in Hague, and he already is going to make 10 for me. That's the Greek Epson. That's the Greek soldier. It's, it's quite a coincidence with that. I was in Atlantic City, and the sculptor, that's all made out of solid wood, mm -hmm. that makes them for the casinos. So it says, I will... Put your face on it. There it is. I, I supplied the slot machine, and he built it for me. Oh, so that's you. That's me. That is you. Right. I notice uh, a nice picture of you with uh, Jania Taylor and uh, Carol Fox. Yeah. Can you tell me about this picture? Well, that was at the convention, and let's say, in, in uh, Atlanta, uh, yeah, Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And this was taken the, the day before he died. He died the next day. Mm. And he and I were very good friends. Let's, uh, let's talk about these stained glass windows that we those saw all, from the outside. Those all came from an auction. There's three there and one in the door as you come in. Now those stained glass windows are on a door. That whole door slides in, in this cavity so, in the, so you can bring stuff in. Now here's, here's what your grandchildren like the most, right? Yeah. This working soda fountain. Working soda fountain. Yeah. The, the marble floor, that's a tabletop. Oh, the marble floor right here. That right, I'm I took about the whole table, and then I said, the hell with it, so I <laughs> inserted the marble in the floor. All right, we've just seen the downstairs of the uh, Magic Barn, and now we're going to go upstairs to see uh, something truly unique. And you have a second kitchen up here. A second kitchen. What's now, what was the reason <laughs> for putting two kitchens in this place? Originally, we did the upstairs, ah. and um, we were going to just use the upstairs. Mm -hmm. And then it got to the point where when we have so many people, they got to go up and down and up and down. So, And then we come across the stove. <laughs> the electric clock was invented in Ashland. The original inventor was Henry Warren, and George Lentros, the man who built the barn, uh, was the chief electromechanical engineer for Henry Warren, where they invented the electric clock. And the company was called Warren Telecron. And written on the clock, it says, Warren Telecron, Ashland, Mass., 
Telecron, and then General Electric. And what happened was he sold the business to General Electric, and General Electric continued with the electric clock, obviously. General Electric was producing the refrigerators, so they wanted a mating clock. So the clock, which was made here in Ashland, mm -hmm. uh, matches the refrigerator. Yeah. All clocks at, at that period made a lot of noise. So did this one. So I said, how can I stop the noise? Very simply. I replaced one of the gears with a cardboard one. It actually, it wasn't cardboard, it was Formica. In fact, I was the first one to start Formica because I wanted a, 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 a lamination of cardboard and resins so that it, it would absorb the, the noise and also it would impregnate itself with oil. So you never have to re-oil those clocks. They're all sealed. They'll run forever, generations and generations. So I was the start of the Formica with DuPont. Nobody has time today, so when you would go get a hot dog, they would put the hot dog bun on the top, push the lever over. With a timer, it would toast the bun. Far too long that we have to wait today. Right? And once that got all the way over, the bun would drop down here and he could put the hot dog in it. And that's wow. When people, that's when people had enough time to eat. This would have been a hotel stove. Um, obviously, that's why there's so many burners and so many, so many ovens. But the really neat thing about this are these domes. <laughs> these little domes are insulated domes, and they would have baked beans or soup. Mm. And they would keep it warm all day by dropping the dome over the soup, and that would keep it warm all day. In other words, they were too lazy to lift it with their hands. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is modern <laughs> convenience here now. We're now going into what I consider the theater part of the Magic Barn. This is where the Worcester Assembly meets monthly, thanks to the generosity of the Lentros family. Where I'm standing right now, uh, there is usually a stage here. It's all, it all fits inside and it all unfolds. And you have a beautiful stage here where, I, in fact, I lectured last year and had a great time because you could see above the heads of the people. <laughs> <laughs> it was very nice. And as we look on the ceilings here, we see a couple of rare posters uh, from Carter and uh, Dante. Mr. Lentros also loves clowns. I get that feeling from this place. Because everywhere you look, you'll find a clown doing something. I have no idea how those two cards got up there, but... <laughs> <laughs> Who put those cards up on the ceiling? So that uh, horse would have been in the center. And it's very rare because it has an actual horse's tail. And this would have been one that isn't ridden. This would have been around the pipe organ in the center. Hmm. So it's a very, very rare, in original shape, horse. A stained glass window is St. George slaying the dragon, patron saint of, of George Lentros. And uh, this would have been made around 1905 for the president of the Excelsior Baking Company. And they were the original bakers of the Ritz Cracker. That was made by one of the members of Assembly Number 16. His name is Grant. And uh, he donated it to the club, to the barn, uh, and he does, he does little models like that. I think it was a great, great, great job he did. It's really nice. If yeah. you look, uh, you see the cups and balls there, and pretty much every classic of magic is, uh, see, I wish I had those in full size, uh, <laughs> everything that's in there. But it's a really nice piece, and even, even the wood and the, uh, the way he made the stage is just wonderful. There was okay. a famous sculptor named John Rogers who was made sculptors from 1862 to 1905. And when Rockwell was to art, to paintings, John Rogers was the people's sculptor. And he made them, used to make them out of plaster. And this is one of his, the traveling magician. And then there is the same one in bronze. This is an, not an original. I bought that about five years ago. That was made in Italy. And it was at a uh, collector's workshop in, in Cambridge, it brought over, and I bought it. I couldn't resist it, of course. So this is a John Rogers traveling magician. Now, the original purpose of, of building this was to house your collection of things that you enjoy. Right. That's it. It's, it's not a place that's open to the public. But I did want it as a magic barn at the beginning. Right. I conceived that. I said, I've got to build a magic barn. And I want to build a stage, and I want to have performance here. I want to. I want to be better than the Magic Castle. <laughs> I've had people from Magic Castle perform here. They'd rather perform here. 
So where do you go from here? Are you going to add to the barn? Well, what I'm hoping to do, we bought one house in the back of the barn. Mm -hmm. There's another right back here. When I built it downstairs, you notice that big door I showed over here? Mm -hmm. There's another one on the other side, which I concealed. I want to buy that other house, rip it down, convert the entrance to there, but add a hundred seat theater in the back of this barn. So this place is not finished not yet. Not finished. <laughs> My greatest thing is a hundred stadium seat theater at the back, going out that front of those French doors. For your own personal use? No, for, for magicians, any magician, anybody. You know, have magic, uh, we always have at least one or two a month. Mm-hmm. You know? And you, and, you, and you give this place uh, to the local Worcester Assembly to meet in. It's a right. wonderful place because it really has a, right. has a magic feel. There's no it. charge whatsoever. They come in and we give them free, I even free, give them free meals. And this is because you enjoy magic I so enjoy much. magic. I used to, when I was in high school, I went to a magic convention. And a man was auctioning off his whole magic act, piecemeal. Mm -hmm. I said, let's add it up and auction off the whole act. I ended up owning all that. I did have a whole stage act, uh -huh. which I still have in the attic over, over my shop. Uh -huh. And that's how I started. Was the... Here we go. Drums. 